This is the Amaran 60X and this is the Cobor CL60. Both are bicolor lights with nearly identical features. So the big question is which one should you get because one is cheaper than the other. I shall start by saying that this is not a sponsored video. I bought this myself to compare to the lights that I already own. First and foremost, what do you get when you purchase these lights? With the 60X, you get the light, you get a mini reflecting dish, you get a mounting bracket, power cables, an NPF battery plate, and it all comes in a super form fitted foam case. We'll talk more about that later. When you buy the coal bore, you get the light, you get a mounting bracket, a mini reflecting dish, you get a Bowens mount adapter, you get power cables, and a padded case for everything to go inside. Now let's talk about the features that these light offer. Both are controllable from zero to 100% power. Both are bicolor from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. Both of them you can control from the back of the light and from Bluetooth, which they have apps and both apps are great, easy to set up. I have no complaints about the apps. They both come with special effects that are programmed into the light and are controllable via the app. However, the cold bore, you can control the special effects from the back of the light. Amaran, you cannot. Both of them are Bowen's mount. However, Amaran's is built into it while the cold bore is a separate adapter that comes with the light. Speaking of which, you can run the Amaran off of batteries as it does come with the NPF battery plate. Plug it in and you're ready to go. Whereas the cold bore does not come with a battery option. However, it does run off of USB-C. So if you had a power bank, you could run it off of that. The USB-C port is just plug and play. There is no lock for the cable, whereas the Amaran does have a locking cable so that you can make sure the cable never gets pulled out by accident. Now, Colbor does address this by putting like a cable hook thing on their mounting bracket so that you can make sure the USB-C doesn't get yanked out while in use. Now, speaking of the mounting bracket for Colbor, this one is detachable along with the Amaran's. Amaran's is detachable. However, Amaran's mounting point is a quarter 20 mount. This is a little bit more universal and you can use it in many different capacities without using the mounting bracket that comes with the light. Cold boards, on the other hand, is actually a NATO rail. This is great for people who have NATO rail accessories. I personally find most people don't. One more thing about the bracket with Amaran is that that bracket does have an umbrella mount on it. So if you wanted to have a cheap diffusion solution, that's a really handy way to use the Amaran. Whereas the cold board does not have an umbrella mount whatsoever. Now there is one feature that the cold board has that the Amaran doesn't quite have when paired with a bunch of other cold board lights. If you bought multiple of these, you can have it where one controls all of them if you put them all on the same channel and ID system. Amaran doesn't really quite have this. However, if you had a bunch of Amaran lights, you would connect them all via the Bluetooth app and then just change them all from within the app all at the same time. You can do the same with Colbor as well. However, Colbor lets you do it from the back of the light. Amaran does not. So those are the features of the Colbor and Amaran. Let's talk about light readings and fan noise. Starting with the light readings, I measure them both from the same distance with my spectrometer. To make it a fair comparison, I use the same Bowen's mount reflector measured at one meter for both of these lights. This is the one from the Amaran, just so you know, but it's very comparable to the one that comes with Colbor. I would like to point out one thing about both of these lights is that with reflecting dishes, whether it's the one that comes with the light or if you use other Bones mount reflecting dishes, both of them have significant hot spots. For me, that makes them pretty unusable as hard light sources. I prefer to use these lights modified, primarily with soft boxes. They're great with 90 centimeter soft boxes or smaller. With that being said, let's talk about fan noise. We've talked about the Amaran before here on the channel. You can check out my videos as I compare it to other lights. And I often mention how the fans are just stuck on. You can't change the speed, the, the how loud they are, anything. The noise isn't that horrible. I am using one as my key light and you're not hearing it really much at all. However, some people are really picky about fan noise. So keep in mind, you can hear these fans. Now, Colbor on the other hand does have fans. They're always on, but they're ultra silent. I've had this at 100% output for hours on end. It does not make any noise. I had to put my ear up to it just to see if it was even running. Not to mention, they actually let you control the fan noise. There is smart control and then quiet mode for the fans with the cold bore. So if you're looking for a very quiet light, then the cold bore is a lot better than the Amaran. But don't make your judgment too soon because there are some pros and cons to both of these. So let's cover those right now. Starting with the Amaran, some of the pros is that it's ready to go just like this. You can chuck it inside your camera bag. It's nice and small, lightweight, one and a half pounds, and it's got the Bowens mount included in it. You don't need an adapter or anything like that. Another pro is the quarter 20 mount as this lets you have some unique ways to rig this up and do fun things with it. I have videos coming out and videos that I've already made about how to do that. So check out the channel. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the new stuff coming out. Beyond that, I love that there's an NPF battery plate that comes with it. That's the main reason I grab this light. I'm grabbing the Amaran all the time because it's so easy just to set it up very quick with some batteries, chuck it in a bag, take it wherever you need to go. You're operational within seconds. There 
are two of the things that I love about the Amaranth, that it does have the locking cable. The reason for that is I've had other lights where if you accidentally tug or trip over something, um, the power could come out. And I've had that happen with other lights. This does not happen with the Amaranth, so I do love that locking cable. The other thing I like is that it does have a hard on-off switch. This is something that's typically called studio mode, where lights are in an always-on sort of position or setting. It allows you to run the light by plugging it into power, or if you're like me, it allows you to set up your entire studio with one click of a button to come on and off. So those are the reasons why I like the Amaran. Now, one of the other crazy things about this light is the price tag is about $180. And the reason why it can be that affordable is the build quality. The build quality on this, unfortunately, is not made out of aluminum. It's more like this hard, heavy-duty plastic. I've had these for about a year and a half. They have served me well, but I'm also not taking them out or dropping them or doing anything stupid with them. So they have lasted me quite a while. I can't say if it's the same for everybody else. I'm just mentioning it as a con because I do imagine there are plenty of people out there who are more rough on their equipment, and maybe that's a bit of a downside for this light. One of the biggest cons about the Amaran is the case that it comes in. I only point this out if you're interested in the case and in using it. If you're not, ignore this point, but it's an awful case as it's form-fitted and you can't get the items back into it. So really, it comes with a case, but you really can't keep using it. Now, when it comes to the cold war and what I like about it, I like that it's small and it's lightweight, just like the Amaran. This one weighs just a little bit less at 1.2 pounds. The form factor, as you can tell, is just slightly different. It's a little bit more narrow, so you could slide it into your camera bag maybe a little bit easier. I like that it comes with a bones mount adapter and a case on the off chance that I was just going to chuck this in a bag and take it with me. At first, I didn't like the rocker switches here on the back to uh, adjust the settings, but I've come to actually really like it as it has made it quite speedy. There is one cool gimmick that I'm not sure if it's a pro or a con for the cold war is that you can slide multiples together. You can keep stacking them out and create like a little hive of lights. Also, the build quality in this is made out of aluminum. It seems like they put a lot of material into this that it seems high quality. I love how quiet the fans are as well. Those are the things that I like about it. Now, when it comes to things I don't like about it, the biggest one is right here on the front. This LED chip is unprotected. There is no glass or anything in front of the chip. It is an exposed chip. That means if you were to get something on it, touch it, or maybe a bug flies directly at it and then burns itself onto the lens, your light is going to be ruined. While this is a 60 watt light, and that might take a little bit to do that, it is a bigger risk. My follow-up con to that is the condiment looking container that is supposed to cover this. It is just literally a piece of plastic that you look like you put ketchup in and eat french fries out of. This is not something that I would say is professional at all. That being said, you are spending a hundred and about fifty dollars on this as of right now. If you're honestly expecting this to last forever, it probably won't. I think if you chose to purchase one over the other, it's not really a bad purchase, especially since the light quality on these are very similar. However, I would say that the Amaran is obviously a little bit more pricey by a thirty forty dollars, but you are getting some features that just the cold war does not have to offer. Now, cold war, on the other hand, I'm not saying doesn't have things going for it. It is cheaper. That sometimes is a really big factor to people. The fans are quieter. They're entirely silent. So if you want to buy a light that has everything you need included with it, you don't have to go buy extra things and make sure they work and find unique ways to rig it up, then the Amaran is probably that light for you. If you're not interested in doing crazy things and you like the USB-C factor and powering it that way, and you like being able to put multiples together and control them in that unique way and have a cheaper light, save a little bit of money, then this is a great light option. I'm not saying it's a bad one. I don't know your specific situation, so if there's questions that you have regarding these, put them down in the comments and I will definitely try to help you out. Also, I will be linking these down in the description. If you want to buy them, please use those links. It helps support the channel. I appreciate it when you do it. Other than that, I will see you in the next video.